Good morning. Good to see you all this morning as we spend time in God's Word together. Hope you're doing well, waking up on this Tuesday morning. And I uh, just want to invite you to, to open your Bibles with me to John chapter 14 as we spend time with the Lord in His Word. Um, we've been uh, just considering Jesus' final words to his disciples in the upper room where he, he spent his last night with them. And uh, here, as, we're, as, we're, as you're turning there to John 14, uh, I would just invite you to, to consider, you know, how many things in this world are temporary? You think through, just, just think through your list. You know, I was thinking of, you know, just um, things that don't last. You know, I was thinking of, uh, they're doing some road work around here, you know, the roads look decent for a while and then they kind of fall apart, you know, they get potholes and the vehicles that we drive on those roads, you know, they, they're nice when they're shiny and new, but after a decade or so, things kind of tend to rust and fall apart. Um, but that is the truth of, of not just that, but, you know, everything in this world. And uh, this morning, as, as we consider God's word, we're pointed to eternal things, things that, that will last. And, and in that, in, in eternal things, in, in Christ, we find peace. Um, so let's, let's read together John chapter 14, beginning in verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Don't let your heart be troubled or fearful. You have heard me tell you I am going away and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe. I will not talk with you much longer, because the ruler of the world is coming. He has no power over me. On the contrary, so that the world may know that I love the Father, I do as the Father commanded me. Get up. Let's leave this place. And uh, so again, as we, as we consider this passage, uh, these are the final words Jesus shares with his disciples that we have recorded in the upper room. And here again, this... Um, he, he's talking to his disciples. He's told them he's departing them. But he, he reassures them and he promises them his peace. Uh, Jesus, uh, here, he, he says, My peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Um, Jesus leaves and gives his disciples peace. And as, as he says these things, uh, the, the words that he used describe an ongoing peace, a present peace. A peace that lasts and endures. It's not just a one-time gift, but it's an ongoing gift. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Um, he he's presently giving his peace in an ongoing way. It's for his disciples. You know, it's he's he's giving this to those that he loves and cares for. Uh, it's it's also a peace that lasts even in his departure, in his physical departure. Of course, he was going to leave. Uh, he was going to die on the cross. He was going to ascend into heaven. Uh, but his peace would endure even in his departure. And then I, I love how he describes this. He doesn't give like the world gives. You know, the, just as we considered a moment ago, things of this world that, that don't last, things that are temporary, uh, that are limited in, in their scope of what they can do. Uh, and they often, the world gives, when the world gives, it gives with conditions. If you do this, I'll do that. It's kind of quid pro quo. Um, but it, in the way that Jesus gives, it's, it's not like any of that. His peace is lasting. Uh, it, it, is, it lasts forever. It's, it's unlimited. There's, there's no limit to his peace. And his peace comes without condition. That is, he gives it unconditionally. And it's so that our our hearts can be at peace. You know, there's many things in this world that trouble us. Uh, you know, our, our finances can trouble us. Um, there, there's just 
our jobs can trouble us at times, our schools can trouble us, worry about studies, worry about, you know, maybe uh, just the neighbors or, or things like that. Um, you know, things can trouble us. Uh, but with Christ, uh, we can have peace. Uh, the disciples, uh, of course, as Jesus was going to depart them, they were going to face opposition as they proclaimed the gospel. People in this world were going to oppose them. Satan, certainly, was going to oppose them. They would face attack and persecution and, and arrest and, and even their lives being threatened. But in, in all of this, Jesus was with them. Uh, his presence and his peace uh, endured. And the, and the same is true for the believer today. You see, uh, even though Jesus uh, was departing his disciples, he reminds them his depart was, was temporary. I am going away and I am coming to you. Uh, so in the few days that, that he was going to be uh, crucified, died, and buried, uh, he, he reminds them he was going to come back. Not only was he going to be resurrected, but even as he would depart in his ascension, he promised the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, Jesus' death meant him leaving this world, but in his absence he promised the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, and his soon return, that he would come soon. And, and he, he reminds us, and he reminds his disciples why he was doing all this, is in obedience to God's plan. I'm going to the Father. The Father is greater than I. That is, the Son submits to the Father's plan. Even while he is um, of the same essence, the Son submits to the Father in everything. He follows the Father's plans for his life. And he found joy in doing so. Jesus found joy and peace even in obedience unto death, even to death on a cross. He, he considered it a good joy to, to bear the sorrow and the shame of the cross for you and for me because of his great love for you. And, and similarly, uh, we should find joy in, in Christ's obedience as well. We should rejoice in his, in his sufferings and his death for us. Uh, because in it, uh, he fulfilled the redemptive plan of his Father. Um, and, and he continues, we should rejoice in Jesus' departure uh, and his ascension, that he rules and reigns from on high, and, and he's fulfilling the redemptive plan for his, uh, for his Father as he, as he has sent us the Holy Spirit, as, as he's commissioned his saints to preach the gospel, um, so that he might draw people to himself, that he might draw people from every nation uh, unto salvation. Uh, we should rejoice in these things, that, that Jesus is at work, uh, and we have the joy to participate with it. Uh, we can, we can uh, you know, be sad and, and, and long for Jesus' return and, and moan the things of this world and groan under the, um, the birth pangs of the... the awaiting the new creation as Paul describes them uh, but we can also rejoice that God is doing his work that he's faithful to his promise uh, that he has uh, commissioned us to, to rejoice and, and be obedient to his plan of salvation that is the preaching of the gospel the, uh, to every nation and so as we do as we, as we follow his, his plans for us we find that joy Jesus found joy in, in completing the Father's plan, and so we too find joy and peace in walking in Christ's commands. Um, there's peace in knowing that, that Jesus has all things under his control. It says, I have told you these things now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe. Uh, Jesus predicted all these things to his disciples, and he, we have them for us today. Uh, and, and by hearing him say these things in advance, it gives us peace knowing that all of this is, is in, under his control. All of this is according to his plan. And Jesus knows everything that's going to happen in your life and mine before it does. Uh, we can trust in how he's leading us. We can trust in what he's doing for us. Uh, we can trust what he's doing in this world around us. Um, Jesus, you know, I just ask you to consider just what would happen in the moments following this conversation. He would be betrayed. He would be handed over to the, the Roman authorities and uh, the Jewish authorities who would hand him over to the Romans and 
He would be uh, tortured and, and crucified. And he, he knew of all this in advance. And yet he, he had peace. Um, he knew that the, the ruler of this world uh, was on the prowl. He was, he was attempting to thwart God's plans, but, but Jesus knew uh, Satan had no power over him. He knew he was on his way to defeat him and sin and death. And he gladly got up and he left it, left the, that upper room that, that night to face it all uh, because he loved you. So if, if Jesus endured all of the Father's plan for you uh, in joy and in peace, and then he leaves us with that same peace, his peace, uh, then we can have the same peace and joy in, in our walk with him. Uh, we can trust and obey his plans for us. Um, is the world going to oppose us at times? Is, is Satan going to oppose us? Of course. Uh, but as we walk with Christ, uh, as we love others, as we, as we share the gospel, as we submit to the Father's plan, as we serve Christ, uh, we will have joy. We will have peace in this world, even though we may come under intense pressure, even persecution, um, even opposition. Um, we will have joy and peace walking with Christ and joy in doing his work. So, so let us walk in that peace today, brothers and sisters. Would you pray with me? Gracious God and Father, we come to you today, Lord, just at the start of a new day, wanting to walk with you, wanting to hear your voice. Uh, Father, we thank you for these words of comfort and peace. We thank you for all that you've endured for us, even though it meant difficulty and, and suffering for you in your death. Uh, Lord, you endured it all. You, you submitted to the Father's plan and you, and you accomplished our salvation. And Lord, even though you are uh, ascended, uh, you are present with us today and you have promised us your peace. Lord, help us to take hold of that peace by faith that we would uh, look to you for direction today, that we would follow your plan, uh, Lord, that we would know that you're with us and that you're coming again soon. Uh, Lord, may you grant peace to my brothers and sisters today, and Lord, may we walk in that peace today, and as we as we share the good news, as we love others in your name, um, Lord, may you grow our hearts uh, in that peace. Lord, we commit this day unto you and, and ask for your grace along the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you again for, for jumping in with us this morning. Uh, God bless you today, and we'll see you again soon.